Greetings, gentlemen. This is Scott McKay, and what you're about to listen to here on the Virtuosity Series is a conversation I recently had with Frank B. Kermit. Now, Frank and I come from completely different angles, but we've kind of arrived at some of the same conclusions in life, which is what makes this particular discussion something I'm really, really excited to present to you. Prepare to have your mind challenged. It's over international telephone line, but I assure you it's worth the listen. There's some great stuff in here. So coming up here is Frank B. Kermit. Enjoy. Hey guys, this is Scott McKay, and you're back on the Virtuosity Program from XMI Communications. I got Frank P. Kermit on the line. How's it going, Frank? I'm doing really great, Scott. How are you doing? Hey, um, couldn't be better. Life is super fantastic. Now, you're up in Canada, and uh, That's right. you're a guy I'm just now getting to know, and I've got to be honest, you know, looking at your pictures and looking at the flow of your website, I never really thought you and I would have a whole lot in common. You know, you seem kind of a dyed-in-the-wool seducer type, whereas... You know, I, I know there's a lot of guys who are running kind of snake oil and tricking guys into getting girls to, you know, be tricked into liking them. And it took me a while to get a hold of you, but I remember the first time you and I talked, we ended up talking probably for three hours on the phone straight, and it was amazing how much we had in common. I would concur with that. Yeah, it was just a blast. And, um, you know, we were introduced by Nick Shane, weren't we? That's right. Nick Shane interviewed me for uh, his uh, showcase interview series. Yep. And uh, I've maintained contact with him, and he said, that, Frank, uh, do you know who Scott McKay is? And you really should uh, meet him. And I said, well, I, I've heard of him, but I didn't really feel that I, I could even approach you at the time. And uh, Nick was good enough to uh, put us in contact. Yeah, I'm glad he did. You know, I've always learned that, you know, no matter what someone's marketing looks like, or in some cases, some guy's URL, I remember Will Hicks is, you are so in my way, and that was such an oppressive sounding URL to me that I didn't, you know, even ever look at his website. And I don't know when I'm going to learn just to actually talk to you guys and get to know you, because in your case, Frank, your story is just amazing. I, I think you probably have got more depth in terms of thinking about guys and really having a heart for guys who want to get better so badly with women and are struggling through it. And uh, I, that's one of the main reasons why I just, I liked you immediately. Um, well, you know what, I appreciate you saying that. The fact is a lot of guys who have openly admitted that they're part of this quote-unquote seduction community yeah. already start off with a negative stigma. Mm. And um, I was not always good with women. I was an average guy. I hit rock bottom. I went five years with no sex, no love, no affection. And I, I think, it, by the way, those weren't years zero through five in your life. No, I was actually in my 20s when that happened. Sure, absolutely. And um, when I got into the seduction community, I was about as low as I had ever been. Hmm. And even I will admit that not everybody that I learned from, whether they be mentors or friends, um, they're not necessarily the type of people I'd feel comfortable bringing home. Hmm. The fact is, is that in the world of seduction, you will have those, uh, how, how did you describe them, snake charmers or snake oil salesmen? <laughs> snake or? charmers sounds fine. I mean, uh, you know, snake oil salesman is a term that I've had uh, other guys use that I kind of latched onto. I thought that really much, pretty much said it all. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know what? There are some very good people out there to learn from as well. Right. And the only thing I can tell you is take what applies to you. Always have your own ethical boundaries uh, uh, intact. Never cross over a boundary that you yourself would feel uncomfortable with. And uh, look at the underlying principles of what people teach. Yes. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a great word there. Um, we had an interview not long ago for another program with Joseph Thundercat Matthews, and he was saying, you know, anybody that's promising you a quick fix and a get-rich-quick scheme, it's the same in any walk of life as it is for, you know, finances and real estate, all that stuff. There's, there's got to be some heavy lifting on going on if you're going to be a man who goes from literally no success to wild success. And I know that's not a popular message. No, it's not a popular message, but uh, what I can tell you in my own story is that I went two and a half years mm. from the time I started studying seduction to the time I finally got sex. Mm. 
And that was two and a half years of solid work every day to reprogram myself, both inside and out. Wow. So but, I don't take anything away from from that statement. Mm. It was not an overnight thing for me. I can tell you that with some of my students, they're achieving in a year or less what it took me to do in two and a half years. Wow. But sure. there's still a number of months of constant effort that needs to be made. Yeah, and you know, nowadays, you know, Frank, I know you and I both have uh, people who read our work rather avidly, listen to our shows. You also have a radio show. Yeah. And they go, wow, that guy's got it made. I want the life that guy's got. And I, I don't know if guys really fully understand that we didn't just wake up one day and get all this handed to us. Very few guys do. I mean, in my case, a, a very difficult divorce that I've talked about frequently at, these, at this point Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel like I could have done much better than I did as a husband, and I still got rejected. And, and like you, it took a good two years or more to dig myself out from under that and really become the kind of guy who was on the trail, even just at the nascent stages of being on the trail of what we now call deserving what we want. And uh, I'd love to hear more about what your life started looking like as you started realizing success. I mean, what was your picture of success, and, and how did you know you'd arrived at it? Okay, well, I'll, I'll give you some, uh, some clear examples then. Uh, two and a half years of just solid study, applying what I've just learned and figuring out what was working for me, what wasn't working for me, coming up with my own theories throughout. I like underlying theories, the mm -hmm. idea that give me one rule to follow that I can apply to any situation. Hmm. The first sign that I knew I had arrived was when I got that first lay in five years. Hmm. I was five years of no sex, and it was halfway through that that I joined the seduction community. Right. Prior to that, I was focusing on trying to get other areas of my life um, in order, and my love life was still that one thing that I always said, it'll, it'll just happen naturally. Hmm. And, yeah, somebody uh, got told that. Yeah. And you know what? Happening naturally is a wonderful philosophy for women to have <laughs> because they're on the receiving end of approaches. Yeah. They're on the receiving end of male attention. But it's not a philosophy that was ever designed for men. Wow.